Hello Booktube! Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day two of the Women in Translation Readathon. And I am getting cabin fever. <laughs> it's 37 degrees out there. I can't leave. I want to get out of the house. And, you know, do, do some actual vlogging, walking down the street and talking to ya. But instead I'm cooped up here and I've been reading, but I'm getting kind of stir crazy so I might push myself to go out to a cafe a little later. Kenji's on his way home and that might be a good excuse because I have trouble reading in the apartment when he's here because he's always watching TV or he's usually watching TV or something which is bothers me. So uh, I wanted to tell you I have started the Zinran nonfiction book about her 10 years as a phone-in radio talk show host in China starting in 1989. In fact before I even talk about those. These two books I bought at the same used bookstore in uh, Tokyo three, four, three, four years ago. And I'm finally reading both of them for this readathon. And I'm just feeling really grateful for how I just follow my nose when I go into a bookstore, whether it's new books or used books, and just pick the books that I've never heard before. And then how delightful is it that all these years later, they fit into reading challenges for this readathon, and I'm actually loving them. I mean, I'm only about 15 pages into this one, so I don't know, but certainly loving this one. This one is very special. I should mention the titles. This is The One Who Did Not Ask by Alta Fatima, translated from Urdu by Ruxana Ahmed. And this one is Zinran, The Good Women of China, Hidden Voices, translated by Esther Tildesley. Esther Tildesley. But I just love that about how I am as a reader and as a book procurer that I have a really good eye. I, it doesn't mean, I don't mean that I don't f f pick books out that I don't, that I end up bailing on or not liking, but I always, my eye always goes to the unusual ones, the ones nobody else has told me about her I have never heard of and that often works well and certainly working well for this one and so far so good with this one so yes this is uh, starting out really good I'm not a big nonfiction reader as longtime subscribers of my channel are fully aware and this one it's it's a really nice palette cleanser in between all the novels I'm reading and it's tough tough stories in here Zinran was a radio host. This was just as Japan was kind of opening up. Deng Xiaoping, the great opening. Is that the right word? New freedoms for the press. And so she started soliciting letters from female listeners across China. She was in Nan Nanjing and has to already told some harrowing stories about that. But anyway, I will have more to say about it later. I'm I realized when I was wrapping up last night, I said I had two more books to read after I finished what I have, and then I double-checked and know I have three more. So I'm not sure I can finish three more plus the four I'm reading, and that would be eight books in ten days because I finished the Japanese one, right? So I'm not sure I can do that, but it doesn't matter. I'm having a great time. But I thought if I'm going to do it, I better get this one started, and this is an actually this is a great palate cleanser in between the others. For now, I just want to tell you about the other translators. Still really enjoying the Norwegian novel, Alberta and Joseph by Cora Sandell, translated by Elizabeth Rokan. And Elizabeth Rokan just died in January 2016, and she was a professor at the University of Bergen in Norway for decades, until she retired in 1990. She was 90 when she died uh, in January 2016. British. She was born in the UK and she translated a lot of Norwegian writers into English. The two names that if you go to her profile on Goodreads, she's all, in addition to all, almost all of Cora Sandell's stuff or maybe all of Cora Sandell's work, she, she has translated a lot of books by Targi Vassas, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I did practice that. And I'm not sure if it's quite right. Targi Vesas and Jostine Garter. Jostine Garter, I think I've heard of. I haven't heard of Vesas, but anyway, so that's Elizabeth Rokan. And 
Suzanne Bernofsky is the translator of The End of Days by Jenny Erpenbeck, and this is a really powerful novel, which I'm now on page 70. And I'm just going to tell you what it says on the little translator bio, which most books don't have translator bios, but this one does. So, uh, she just sounds like a genius, because not only has she translated so many other German writers, Robert Walser, Hermann Hesse, Gregor von Rezur, von Rezuri, Ludwig Herig, and Franz Kafka. Those are not all German, perhaps, especially Kafka is Czech. I don't know. I actually don't know what language Kafka wrote in. But she's also translated Yoko Tawada, so she's fluent in Japanese, too. She's amazing. And she has a book, a critical translation. You know, I showed you some, some kind of critical theoretical books about translation from the bookstore the other day. She's written one of those called Foreign Words, Translator Authors in the Age of Goethe, and it's a study of translation theory in the 18th and 19th centuries. I don't want to read it, but um, she's just a genius, Susan Borowski. And the translator of the Zinran book has kept or did keep a very low prof profile, Esther Tildesley. There's nothing about her on the internet. So, when was this published in English? Early 2000s. The internet was around then, I remember it was, but yeah, there's nothing about her. So, if anybody out there knows anything about Esther Tildesley, let me know. She also translated the book that, she was a co-translator of Zinran's other book, or another book by, I don't know how many books Zinran has written, I think only two. I think I was just on Goodreads today, and the other one is about Tibet, and Tildesley is one of the co-translators for that. So, but that's all I was able to find out. All right, well, I'm going to keep on reading and maybe summon up the courage to actually go outside in this blistering heat. I'm ready for autumn. Hey, well, I just had to get out of the house, and uh, it's actually, I mean, I've only been outside for 12 seconds, and it's not as bad as the temperature. It's about 36 degrees. The temperature says, but I'm all right for, for a few minutes anyway. So I'm walking to the home center because they have a large, almost like a food court seating area. And there's an ice cream shop and another fast food shop there. And uh, that's the closest place I can to get out of the house. Because in my new and wonderful marriage, <laughs> With Kenji, I, I just can't read when he's home. So he's he went to his parents' place. He went to his parents' place last night and he's just coming home. So I said, meet me at this home center, food court, we'll have coffee, and then you go home and relax, and I'm gonna stay there and read for a couple hours. Because uh, I wouldn't get much done. And I I pretty much have accepted today that, well, I think I can finish all the books I'm currently reading, which are five, five different books. The, the, the last two that I was hoping to polish off on Thursday and Friday, I probably won't get to those, or not to both of them, and that's totally fine. I still have filled all the prompts and bonus points. I'll just have to double up on a nonfiction that also has red on the cover, and otherwise I'll be there, and uh, I can't. You know, can't read any more than I can read in a, in a 10 days. Much more importantly, the books that I've chosen seem to I'm really enjoying. There's none that so far, and I'm not may not get to any others, but certainly been no bales. And this Chinese nonfiction one is starting out really great. The letters that these Chinese women are were writing to to Zinran when she was a radio host are just heartbreaking. Yeah, it's, it's hot. Look at that sun. I'm, uh, I've now been walking for as long as I've been talking to you and I'm very uncomfortable and if I had to walk anymore, I wouldn't I'd start to feel sick. So, at least I got us outside for a bit and I'll get a couple more hours of reading here and who knows what kind of vlogging can I get up to at a home center, but we'll see. Cross-cultural, hey? Ah, 
Ah, air conditioning. <laughs> Is it going to be a hot guy kind of day or not? So far, wasteland. Come on, come on. Where are they? No oh, possibility here. Young daddy? Really? Oh, yeah. Oh. This is for Steve Donahue. There you go, Steve. Happy birthday. <laughs> wow, I've never seen it so busy. So yeah, that first table was no good because Japan doesn't have central air conditioning. So there's all these, so they've got air conditioners in the roof. That's one. But if you're not sitting right underneath it, like that table where that guy's sitting is not underneath an air conditioner, it's too bloody hot. So, oh, now I can move right under. Ha ha ha. Hey, okay, so I've done uh, another 90 minutes or so of reading in that food court. Picked up some groceries, and you see them there. <laughs> I'm going home. Kenji's waiting at home for me. And you know what? I've not only been reading, but doing some thinking. I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> I'm exhausting myself, um, and it's not a, I don't have to, it's not a, it's my readathon. <laughs> I can't probably, maybe I can't even finish the books that I'm reading right now and that that's totally fine so i'm just going to give myself a break here i'm probably not going to do daily vlogs for the rest of the week unless i have stuff to say it's going to be really hot this week i'm not going to want to be outside very long and i'm not going to push myself to finish these books uh, by the end of the day friday maybe i can um but I'm not going to kill myself to do it. That's what I feel like I've done this weekend. I've just been pushing, pushing, and getting bleary-eyed when, in fact, all of the books that I'm reading right now, I'm really enjoying. But I'm putting way too much pressure on myself to read them fast and move on to the next one. And that's not the way to read. So I just, just a reality check. I didn't need to say that really to any of you, but I certainly needed to say it to myself. So... Uh, this is from now on it's going to be a no pressure women in translation readathon which means you may not hear from me tomorrow maybe you will i don't know i'm just going to play it by ear and uh, i'm not going to kill myself to get these books read but i'm really enjoying them so that's that's where things are at at the end of the day on sunday day what is it huh? day two of the women in translation readathon oh see you tomorrow or sometime soon Thanks for watching. Okay, I spoke too soon. Look what I noticed on the way home. There's some kind of festival at this temple that I discovered about a month ago. And the lights were shining through the trees. So I'm going to have a look. Because it is freaking beautiful.